One of the other systems that we're going to be exploiting in this research and that geologists use and is probably the most uh, commonly used geochronometer in the world uh, actually uses the potassium argon decay scheme. So about a one hundredth of one percent of all potassium in the world is radioactive and some of it will decay to the noble gas argon. And it turns out that a lot of rock forming minerals like the biotite that you see, this dark mineral that's shot all throughout the rock I'm sitting on, contain a significant amount of potassium. So that means that over time, uh, as that potassium decays, uh, the amount of argon in that crystal will start to increase. And where this gets in interesting is that it turns out that because argon is a noble gas, it doesn't like to bond to anything else in the crystal structure. It will get trapped in the crystal structure like it's in a little cage. But when a rock is deep in the earth and hot, the atoms of the crystal are moving around enough and the argon little atom has enough energy that it will actually escape into the atmosphere. About a percent of all the air that you breathe right now is argon and that's where it comes from, from the decay of potassium in rocks like are surrounding us right now. So what that means is that the argon or the daughter product will only get trapped in the crystal for us to find and study later and measure if the rock is sufficiently cool. And it turns out that in biotite, when a rock is above about 300 degrees Celsius, which is relatively hot, um, the argon will escape on, almost instantaneously. So when we take a biotite and we measure a potassium argon date on it, we're not actually measuring the time that that biotite formed, which could have been billions of years ago. What we're actually measuring is the time that's elapsed since that crystal got cold enough for the argon to be trapped in the crystal structure. We call these systems where the daughter product and the retention of the daughter product is temperature dependent thermochronometers. So it's a, like a geochronometer, but instead of dating the formation of a crystal, it's measuring some thermal event, cooling through some temperature typically. Uh, we generically call that temperature a closure or blocking temperature. And it turns out that every decay scheme, potassium to argon, uranium lead, and there's a variety of other ones, and every different mineral have a slightly different closure temperature. So while this might tell us when a rock cooled through 300 degrees Celsius, if I take an appetite out of this and I do a uranium thorium helium date on it, which is similar, it's going to tell me when this rock cooled about through about 60 degrees Celsius. What that means is that any geologic process that cools off a rock, whether it be coming close to the surface from the very hot depths of the earth to the cooler surface, whether it be the cooling of a lava flow or a volcanic ash, whether it be the heating of a meteorite impact and then the cooling subsequent to that, any process that cools off a rock, we can track using these thermochronometers. And what we're going to be doing in this research project here is we're going to be collecting a variety of rocks and trying to separate out a variety of minerals and use a whole range of radioactive decay schemes to try to track this rock as it moved from the deep earth where it was being ductally deformed up to the surface where we can see it now. And hopefully by combining these thermochronometers uh, from a variety of positions, so very high in the mountain range to very deep in the mountain range, from a variety of lithologies, we can actually track the entire 80 million year history of this rock on its journey from the depths up to the surface where you can come and visit it today.